how to do this. Hey everyone, it's uh, it's 8.30 Final Fantasy Randomizer time. Welcome to the Puff and Pulse Variety Hour. I am the man after midnight at Dead Pulse. Not joining me tonight is Greg Lee Puff because of Thanksgiving stuff. Uh, but he will definitely be here next week. And I've also got a special guest, Jat2980. Jat, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Uh, there's lots of insanity going on. We got some serious FFR action, but of course, most importantly for our ducks, we have the Puff and Pulse Variety Hour, the kind of pretty exciting VOD review series you guys are planning. Well, it's probably going to be a big undertaking. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm fingers crossed, that all of the ducklings that are going to participate in the duckling derby are going to submit a VOD review uh, for us <laughs> to for us to look at, as well as you know some of the veterans that we can throw in there. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping sure. to get you know 20 or so of these pounded out in six weeks. Yeah, 20 is a lot. That's a very aggressive target. But I remember like when I was doing this in the last one, I think we got through about um i think i got through about 10 or 15 or so and you know that was a pretty good number so you know that's an aggressive target but i think it's uh gonna be awesome and there's i think they're incredibly valuable so i'm glad that you guys took this initiative upon yourself uh well absolutely so before we get uh on to the vod review we're doing uh we're gonna be doing luffy today and luffy's uh why we picked that one a it was first and b because it is the duckling weekly uh of this week actually so the first week of boot camp mm-hmm uh, but before that, uh, I wanted to do a slight interview of you um, because there's uh, something going on that's called Archipelago, and uh, I would like to ask you questions about it if you could give me a one to two minute rant. Of course. Um, I feel like right now I'm like the, the guest, like, you know, my movie just released and I get to go on a bunch of shows to talk about, you know, this cool thing we got going on. But I'm, I'm of course, very passionate about it and more than happy. So, yeah, fire away, Dead Pulse. No, that was that was really the lead in. I know that you're going on all of the Final Fantasy randomizer shows, but basically what is Archipelago and what should we be expecting over the next couple of weeks with it? Yeah, so fundamentally, if you're a duckling or you're relatively new, uh, whether to FFR or randomizers in general, um, randomizers take all the items in one game, shuffle them all together, put them in new boxes, and then you find them again. Archipelago was like, you know what? What happens if we take all the boxes in all the games, shuffle all of them together, and then people play and find items for each other, send them to each other, send them back and forth, play co-op in different games. And that's essentially what Archipelago allows you to do. So um, my own contributions was trying to get FFR, um, you know, the game we know and love, integrated with it, um, which was a really, you know, not easy, but something that was definitely doable based off the really hard work of Berserker and his team. So, you know, that's something that we have uh, live right now. There's a release candidate that's available on hashtag... Um, archipelago discussion right now in the pins uh so definitely come check it out and we also have now you know i mean literally right now we have 12 people playing um all at the same time so we have a lot of people who are kind of getting more knowledgeable and able to help you set up and help you get involved so we're more than happy to have um you know some more new players some more old players everyone kind of get involved and you know we're hoping that like co-op and fall league and stuff like that in the future will be able to use this new technology and yeah jargon is it, it it's kind of like an avengers movie you know you take uh your 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 x-men you take your uh captain america you take all these people you'll shove them together and then make them all work together in some way so that's great. Um, besides Final Fantasy Randomizer, what uh, what's your favorite game on there? And you know, you can go top three or whatever. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, number one for me is actually Time Spinner. Um, it's a Metroidvania released. Uh, it's a modern, more modern game. So it's in the older style, but it was released in I believe 2018. It's just got such a good soundtrack. Absolutely wonderful controls. Feels so good to play. So definitely something I would recommend checking out. I I have I, I really like Castlevanias, uh, especially the older ones. So um, yeah, like Ari of Sorrow is another one that I've worked on the randomizer for. So, well, not on the randomizer, around the randomizer for, I guess. So that's definitely, I think, my favorite. And then second favorite is, uh, I think Link to the Past is probably my second favorite, just because I think it fits the formula really well for a history lesson on AP. It started out as just a Link to the Past multi-world. Um, and then number three is actually Factorio, uh, which is totally out of left field. But I really like the gameplay. I think it fits the formula pretty well. And it's, it's lots of fun. The only problem with it is just a little bit on the longer side. Oh yeah, I'll agree to that. True or false? If you say time spinner three times, does Dark Moon appear behind you? Uh no. You have to say time spinner Castlevania, time spinner to Castlevania, and then he appears like Dracula. And uh, not that I'm uh, not that I'm uh, you know selling anything, but I heard a rumor that you can get time spinner on Steam right now, and it is on sale. 
Yes, it is on sale for like 13 bucks or something like that. I mean, I know that's that's American dollars. So in Canada, you know, that's like 100 bucks or something like that. But uh, it is, I think, $12 in the States right now. So I would definitely recommend picking it up. And that's all you need to play the randomizer is just the base game on Steam. So. Well, that is perfectly amazing. Uh, so I'm super, I'm excited for that, and it seems like uh, a lot of the community is excited for that. Uh, is there anything else you want to touch on with uh, with the archipelago with the development? No, I just you know I think everyone should take an ch opportunity to check it out if you didn't already see it. We have an exhibition race, and it looks like racing is really going to be a super super fun way to uh, experience this. Like it looks like racing is I mean casual play is super fun as well as you can see there's you know a bunch of people playing casually but i think racing is also going to be fun so um yeah just get involved figure it out it's got a little bit of a learning curve up front but nothing too hard and there's lots of people who can help you out and then um get into it so yeah i'm, I'm more than thrilled that the community is embracing it already um so that makes me really happy it's kind of why i spend time to work on these things just like with the duckling program right uh you want people to participate want people to enjoy themselves and people to have fun especially in community settings and that's kind of what uh what i think ap represents and i think it's what the duckling derby represents as well yeah we're checking all the boxes uh so next question i just got handed a question from my assistant it says uh jat you are a cutie patootie well first off love that's not really a question uh <laughs> that might have been for my wife but uh how we're gonna spin this is um i know that before i race um i will make sure to wash my face wash my beard uh make myself feel good and look good uh, mm -hmm. It just raises my confidence. Is it, 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 do you do something similar, or, or am I out of uh, just completely out there? Uh, I definitely have my pre-race routine, but it doesn't really involve like my physical self. It much more involves my my mental self. So what I always do is I always to this day I got in a habit of writing down flags, both to do comms and to do um, and for my like duckling stream. So I would always like kind of copy out the key flags onto a notepad before I would start racing. And to this day, I still do that before all my races. Um, yeah, and the other one, as as Devia says, is is get tea. So those are kind of the two big ones that I always uh, end up doing. So I, I get myself a cup of tea, not too much, because otherwise I'm gonna have to go to the washroom on the chaos floor, and that's always awful. But the big one for me is writing down the critical flags. It's not copying the flags. It's like looking through and being like, okay, which of these do I have to remember? Okay, here's my incentive locations. Here's my incentive item. Oh, this blursing. This fighter has um, a defense that it can uh, equip before promotion. Okay, write that down. Okay, all caps, northern docks on, uh, things like that. And that just really helps me like mentally prepare. So I'm like seeing what the seed's going to look like, what I need to be thinking about. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my pre pre race routine. Well, that's more substantial than mine. I, uh, you know, refresh my uh, my diet wild cherry Pepsi and just wash my face and call it good. Well, well, you see, I don't have a big beard. Unlike you and Gregly Puff, I have a lot of beard envy. Uh, I would grow, I grow like wispy things, so um, it's banned in the household for me to grow much facial hair beyond just you know a little bit. Uh, so you know, there, I couldn't take part in a beard washing <laughs> ritual even if I wanted to. That's fair. I I have the opposite thing. If I ever shaved the beard, I don't know how much longer I would be married. Um, but, uh, yeah, so next, I, I'm going to have to remind myself, I want to, I want to ask Gregory next time what his, uh, beard washing regimen is because long, long are the days ago that you would just use the one generic soap for, you know, your beard, your face and everything. If he has a specific beard wash that he uses, I really do want to know. We, I mean, we have to, we do have to get that insight from, from Gregory at some point. It, it is important. We'll have to talk, uh, you'll have to talk beard maintenance in, in the next episode. <laughs> Uh, and I got time for one more question, uh, and this was kind of a, a throw-in. Is uh, you talked about this a little before, but uh, how do you prepare for a one v one race? And yeah, I mean, we we've we kind of talked about this a little bit in the past, and I think you know what you're asking is like, how is a one v one race different from a group race, which is different than like an async race? So like, what happens if you're running for, racing four people live versus you're trying to get the best time in the Duckland Weekly versus what's happening if you're like racing one on one? Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. In a, in a 1v1, like, uh, Jat and I had, had talked about this. Uh, we, we kind of, uh, I will rate people by uh, their execution advantage in comparison to myself, and that gives me 
uh, like a tier list, essentially. So, you know, your Crab Cakes, your Spell Zap, Gregly Puff, Fry Teeth, Ale Markin, they're all going to be up in the S tier to where if I make a critical error during the match, I'm going to need to make up that time somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, so it really does depend on the person that I am facing and what their overall capabilities are, if that makes sense. Yeah, so like to break it down a little bit more. Um, so first off, we have to define like what is execution advantage and what is execution. And like what we're defining execution on is a combination of decision making. But more than anything, it's actually like how fast the player is able to make decisions and input their decisions. Um, if you've ever watched top tier FFR runners, there's basically no pausing. And on every single floor, they're immediately moving to the in the right direction. On every single battle, they're not thinking about what spells they're going to be casting. They just know intuitively what spells they're going to be casting. Um, when they're equipping gear, they're quick. When they're using heal pots, they're quick. They spend minimum time in um, in towns. This is what I refer to as execution, and it's separate from seed to seed decision making. And the reason is because seed to seed decision making. Sometimes you make the wrong decision. Sometimes you make the right decision. Execution fundamentally is something that's constant throughout seeds um you can of course improve at it but it's not something that really changes depending on the layout of the seed um some people might be better at executing entrance floor than others like some people might need more time to track and that would decrease their execution things like that but in general it's like pretty common to the player rather than common to the exact flag set or seed that you're running and what dead pulse is saying about execution advantage is like how much faster at baseline or slower at baseline that the player that you're facing is than you and this is quite important to recognize and the reason is because if you are facing someone who you believe is going to be substantially slower than you at baseline it is beneficial to yourself to try and take more of the variance out of FFR. And that means variance in terms of high roll times and low roll times. You want to narrow your range. And the way you narrow your range is by um, taking more safety levels, taking a safer party, spending a little bit more time to grind some gold, or opening a few more boxes. Um, I don't know. What other ways, Dead Pulse, do you do that would help um, incre- decrease your variance, like when you're going into dungeons or you know preparing for a seed as a whole? Uh, it would it would honestly be taking the quote unquote mathematically correct plays, even if they mm-hmm. aren't like the closest plays, or taking the closest plays, um, if you have multiple decisions to make. Mm-hmm. Really, it is just you're probably going to full clear everything that you need to do, but you're going to do it quicker than your opponent. Correct, and that means that the odds of them high rolling so much that they're going to beat you is relatively small because you're already starting with like a five or ten minute advantage just based off execution alone as you get closer to even what do you change dead pulse uh that's yeah i'm not exactly the expert on that one uh but but what i will say is um i will take more i will take one or two risks like flat out risks during there and if they pay Mm -hmm. off i know probably that i'm in the lead if they don't pay off i know that i'm behind and that modifies my strategy for what i do for the rest of the seed whether or not i I go okay i can check a couple more boxes i can take a couple of safety levels or if it's nope i'm level 18 i gotta go see i'm a little different than you actually when when i think i'm even with someone i decrease i do not take additional risks well i do but i I don't take additional risks in terms of my decision making i take additional risks in terms of my risk tolerance and what i mean by that is that i will attempt a marsh dive like slightly lower level than i would want to or maybe i dive ice because i think it's the mathematically correct play but i'm not guaranteed to be safe going through it or i um you know will fight Kraken when I'm in the area, even though I'm not 100% guaranteed, because I think the time loss of double dipping C, for example, is too high. So while I'm still making the like mathematically correct plays, I'm in terms of like locations to check routing and things like that, I'm more willing to take risks with like my character levels, my character's HP, um, and things like that than I would be be normally. Um, Does that kind of make sense, Dead Pulse? Yeah. Uh, How I kind of translate it is uh, like in American football, when you're in the lead, 
uh, yeah. you just try to run out the clock. Like you just try to right. <laughs> get to the end, get get it over with because you're probably going to win. Uh, mm-hmm. But this works in the converse as well because if you have a a, a significant uh, disadvantage, this yeah. means that you should go in with a riskier party and you should take those risks because if they pay right. off, they're going to pay off in spades, and you can that, you can beat anybody. That's yeah, that's the third place, right? This is when you're not even anymore. This is when you feel like the your opponent has an execution advantage, in which case you want to increase variance. Because if you decrease variance and your opponent decreases variance, well, all of a sudden there's no overlap anymore. They just win 100% of the time, right? So you need to increase your high roll percentage, uh, or sorry, increase your high roll like potential uh, in exchange for sacrificing some of the consistency. And how much you want to do this depends on how big of a gap there is. If you think that you're going to be 15 minutes behind to start, you need to take pretty substantial risks, uh, skipping chests, uh, running very risky parties. Maybe you run a three man or maybe the opposite. You run a four man, but go in at level 16 into Topher. Um, if you think there's like a five minute advantage, though, or a three minute advantage, this is where I, uh, I hate to call you out like this a little bit dead pulse. But I think against CC, uh, like you over. You gave her too much credit. Right. Um, and in uh, doing I would so, say I gave myself too less credit or too, sure, sure, <laughs> too sure. fewer credit. Sure, sure, sure. You can't you can't really say CC is not exceptionally good, but you didn't give yourself enough credit. So you thought the advantage was more than it potentially was. And in doing so, you took too much risk. Yeah, yeah um, I absolutely misjudged uh, where, what position I was in. And so it mm-hmm. really is important to, to figure out where you stand. And by doing the weeklies, you can kind of figure that out. Mm hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, this whole conversation is really just around, like, in a 1v1 race scenario, you really do need to consider that you're not only playing against the game, you are also playing against another person, and you win by getting a faster time than them, not getting a fastest time overall. Um, versus with Duckling Weeklies, depending on how, you know, just very quickly to go into, like, those async race settings. I think in, like, an ace, uh, that depends on what gives you value. If you... Um, if, yeah, you're yeah, Ailes, absolutely right. You're also playing against yourself, but in a one v one, really, it, it is just about you know how you do relative to the other player. Versus in like an async, I, I view those very much as playing against yourself or maybe playing against everyone, and that depends. If you want to try and get the very first time, maybe you play super risky and just forfeit if you don't do well. It just depends on what gives you joy. If you want to like try and get a time like saying where am I relative to other people who are trying to just get a solid time then you know play your middle of the road strats um in a large group race i would recommend playing like as if you're even that would be my honest suggestion like if it's a playing race half the players go in and half the players go home and you think you're pretty you know you're like a top top half player but barely you know play the even strategy don't take too much risk don't take not enough risk just play the kind of middle ground yeah that's exactly what i did in uh, winter 20 21 yeah that would have been mm-hmm. the, that would have been the one i was in uh i went in going all right uh I d- i'm not considering myself having an advantage i'm going to methodically go through everything take kind of minimal risks but just take enough so that i can i can get in the top five because yeah. you don't need to win every race in the duckling derby you just need to do right. good enough to beat you know everybody sans one person exactly yes exactly and um yeah, that, I mean, that's that's pretty much, that summarizes it perfectly. So, yeah, I think that we can kind of move on from this discussion. But if people have any questions, you know, definitely feel free to ping us or talk about it in the new player duck pond. I think, like, Deadpool and I sometimes have conversations about things that I think just aren't, we don't necessarily bring up with, like, it's just not something that we think is of interest to other people. But when you look at it analytically, I think these things can be interesting and important and they're kind of like a different side of competition in ffr which i think is valuable this the, honestly this whole discussion this whole idea is is what i believe pushed me uh from when i was just starting out like two months in i was i was getting some decent times but i really wasn't thinking about uh what kind of advantage people had over me what kind of advantage i had over me or <laughs> i had over them uh and how i should modify my play style to that um all mm-hmm. i was doing was pretty much just watching you know spring tournament 2019 2020 trying to mimic what everybody was doing and then of course watching caleb and dvs who were racing almost every week when i was uh, coming up 100 mm-hmm. percent. well speaking of watching people race uh Shall we get into this VOD review so oh, we yeah. can learn some let's, stuff from let's the do Luffy? It. So, so very quickly, right. Deadpulse, before we um, like dive right into the VOD review, do you want to just spend a quick second to kind of highlight, like, write down for me verbally, 
wow, that was a terrible sentence, but explain to me, like, you know, imagine that you were going through the flag set and just like, let's talk about like, what are the key things that you're highlighting for this flag set that like people should really hone in on and understand exists? Uh, so this, like I said before, is the uh, the Duckling Bootcamp Week 1 and also the Duckling Weekly. This is a different seed of it, obviously. So if you haven't done the current seed, like this won't interfere with that. But the <laughs> things to note are going to be, with this flag set, you have the Ryukin Desert checked on. Mm -hmm. That means as soon as you get the floater and some way to get to it, either with the canoe through the inner sea or the ship and the uh, canal, you can instantly access it. So this means that I am Correct. going to go to all of the locations that could have incentive items and pick the quickest ones uh, mm -hmm. to basically try to get the floater first. Right. Yeah, um, that's the big one that I had circles. Whenever Ryukin Desert docks on, big circle. Write it down. Don't forget. It's going to cost you minutes if you make a mistake on that. Yeah, getting that floater, uh, I mean, I, I will just say this with no, no statistics behind it, but nine times out of ten, if you get the floater first in a race, you're going to win. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just how it goes. And anything else in the flag set that's like that you would highlight or like remind yourself of before the race starts? Uh, thief agility being on specifically, uh, but I guess I would do that at party select. Um, what else? Just the individual. Uh, uh, I always keep the flags up in the incentives so that mm -hmm. I always have a quick reference of okay, I can go here, here, or here. Still. Yep. So I, I would just write down all thing. the incentives. I think the last one that I would highlight on here is um, the fact that the black belt um, has does not have half crit rate. Um, we once did some analysis as our team and realized that a black belt, and by we I mean dead pulse, um, that a black belt at even like level twenty eight is can be better than a fighter with a masa if like with a decent masa um, if the black belt crit rate is in half. So it, it does definitely impact your party selection depending on yeah um, the scale. Um, I we intentionally didn't talk about black belts very much because uh, you know I'm not saying that black belt week is coming up next week, but uh, this no, is definitely black belt week. Is, black belt week is never week two of Doctor Reed. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, black belt was uh, that's what a lot of people were taking. So this party that Luffy has is one that's probably going to be one of the more popular ones uh, or a black belt party. Uh, so what are your thoughts on uh, this type of party, the Fighter Thief, Red Mage, Black Mage? Well, let's talk about the pros and the cons for it, right? So the, the pros for it are that it has good running. Uh, the Thief and the Black Mage combined makes it quite strong for um, for going, for running away from parties. And this is good for the early game. It's also good considering that, you know, well, the fact that you don't need to open a bunch of boxes and it's not entrance floor or shard hunt or anything like that makes that running isn't at an all-time premium, but it definitely helps. So it definitely is good at running. Um, it has good two-man potential. And what I mean by that is it has the red mage available, so that way either the fighter or the thief uh, could end up two-manning with the red mage. But of course, the most common is going to be fighter red mage. Uh, and it also has um, good, honestly, four-person potential through the early game and then two or three-man potential in the late game. So fighter, thief, red mage, black mage is probably one of the best, if not the best, party to go through the early game with now the downsides are that it's not necessarily going to be um the safest party throughout most of the game other than its run potential you know it doesn't have a white mage for life magic it's not guaranteed access to exit not guaranteed access to life not not guaranteed access to invis too so though that's a little bit of the downside but overall it's it's a pretty solid party i would say um i i think its major downside is it doesn't have a black belt maybe you can get into that a little bit dead pulse yeah, the only other option would be to kind of change out that fighter to a black belt, but at that mm. point, like, I don't know. If if I'm going to take a black belt in these flags, uh, I want that black belt to be leveled, so I'm going to go black belt red mage. Yeah, like, you could consider, like, black belt thief red mage or something like that, but I don't think we need that much help in the early game with the scaling. Maybe if the magic's really bad, you could re-roll to black, back, black Belt Thief Red Mage just to get that run chance to help you get through the early levels, but I don't think it's that helpful. My so. my biggest concern with something like this is, so we have uh, Short and Topher on, but you have to refight all four fiends. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't get Fast and Temper at a low level, or Nuke at a low level... Uh, mm -hmm. you are putting yourself at risk for characters dying, specifically the Black Mage. So if the Red right. Mage doesn't have life, this is going to be really difficult. Correct. 
Okay. But, so uh, I think we talked a little bit about yeah. party. I think this is a, a good selection, though. This is something that I would definitely cons excuse me, consider running for this, especially if I feel more like running a fighter, uh, two or three men in the late game and a four person in the early game. Uh, this is the party that I ran for the actual Duckling Weekly seed when I was vetting it. So. Perfect. Okay, well, let's uh, get started here, then. All right, um, so for some reason, my Discord is not uh, allowing me to stream to it, so Jad and I are going to just be starting this, you know, together. So uh, it's at 4.13. I have it set to two times speed. Uh, so, uh, you know, one, two, and three. <laughs> and apparently I didn't queue it up right, because it's, you know, it's going. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Sometime in the near future, this is happening. The first thing that I'm going to know, I have not watched this fully through, uh, so I'm, I'm going to be surprised and, and we're kind of kind of be talking about uh, uh, things as it comes up. But the first thing I'm going to note is I want to see his Canaria time, because one of, <laughs> one of the biggest things that, that I have is you have 400 gold. If you're not out of Canaria by 45 seconds, like there isn't anything in Canaria that should take longer than 45 seconds. Yep. I, I think my I when I was a brand new duck, one of the first things I did was just time my Canaria times, and it was like, once I got good at it, it was like 42 seconds, almost on the dot every single time. 42 to 43 seconds with almost no more variance if I check exactly the same shops in the exact same order. So, unless you're buying three spells for all your mages. So we're already at the 40, 50, 52, 53. Uh, so at this point, uh, Luffy would be about 12 to 13 seconds behind someone who I would consider an S-class runner. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely, uh, everybody, uh, just load up some seeds and try to uh, get yourself out of Canary by 45 seconds. And then try the same seed uh, when you know where everything is to just see how fast you can go. And you'd be amazed. You can get out of Canary with two mages at the 35 second mark. Yeah, absolutely. And not only does working on your Canaria time help, it also helps to your Elfland time and your Provoke time and everything like that, because the same skills are basically used, right? You're going to take almost the same route through a town every single time. I do like this. Luffy picked up a bunch of gold in Temple of Fiends uh, and is able to buy a bunch of cabins and heal potions, basically setting, uh, setting up the stage. So I guess uh, the next goal is to get to the pirates and kill them by the three minute and 30 second mark mm -hmm. yeah I, I really like the play to grab your heals pures softs save items um as, as soon as you have gold and can if you can't because the time loss to do that is so small compared to the time loss of wiping or having to go to a town to specifically pick something up i think it's just almost always worth the trade-off this this ties back into the earlier thing we were talking about dead pulse if i was even or had an execution advantage i would do it 100 percent of the time if i thought i was like horribly behind then maybe i skip it just like take a little bit of a risk and save the 30 seconds uh so let's quick talk about some of the spells so exit was uh uh, level one slot four, so it was white locked until promotion. Uh, mm -hmm. But we had warp right away, so that means yeah, I'm not I'm not rerolling. However, fade was level two, but ice three was also level two, so we have some decent sweepers right away. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not not really a problem. I mean, I think I wouldn't reroll for exit even if there was no warp at level one if it's not entrance floor. But um, yeah, so just just that's my own personal preference. I get a hooray. But yeah, so far so good. I think you know. Uh, Luffy may be 30 seconds or so behind just on execution right now, um, but everything else has been extremely solid, I would say, the spell selections. And, uh, a few small movement optimizations, um, like going from Provoca to Canaria, there was like, I don't know, 10 extra steps that were taken, but relatively minor. That's a step there. You're talking about the Marsh one, right? Yep. In front of the door, yeah. Do we want to quickly touch on that? Uh, so we did mention it in the uh, the mm -hmm. uh, duckling boot camp, but if you uh, oh wizards are sleeping, that's terrible. Um, but if you walk in front of the doorway, through a doorway, or at the bottom of um, any of the rooms, they're encounter free. So um, you want to walk in front of as many doors as possible because you're going to save a step. And you say, oh, it's only one or two steps. Yeah, say that until you're one step away from the, you know, lighting the water orb and you get ambushed by lobsters. It's also something that's just strictly correct, right? There's no downside to doing it. So you might as well incorporate it into your standard routing. Um, 
So what do you think of this? Uh, do you think there is a mitigatable factor in this wizard fight? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the thief should be in the first position. Why? So the thief has plus 80 agility, and mm -hmm. you, it uses the agility plus the luck stat to determine whether or not you ambush or get ambushed. And so the mm -hmm. higher those two stats are combined, the better chance you have of getting ambushes and avoiding ambushes. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are taking a thief in these flag sets, which you should be, that thief has to be slot one. Mm-hmm. Also, with the improved agility and the dodge chances, it's also an excellent pseudo-tank, right? It's not a good spell tank, but it's a very good melee tank. Yeah, it essentially, I mean, it reduces your armor or your uh, the damage that you take in the beginning game by up to half. Right. Um, so what do you think about the decision to go to Elfland um, after... Um, like Marsh. Uh, I love that, because you have, you had houses, you had level one warp. Uh, the ability to do that is, like, perfect routing. I agree. I don't usually take that Elfland route. Like, I usually do, um, I usually go around the south if I haven't found the item magic yet, but I think what Luffy did was also reasonable. Yep, we got the floater right away, we made all the quick checks, and now we're going to check out, uh, <laughs> we're not going to forget about Sarda. I don't think Titans was incentivized. We might just be checking chests. Oh, uh, oh, dragon armor there. That's cute. But this is something that I think if you want to like be as fast as possible, you cannot be checking um, too many bonus chests in this run. L let's talk quickly why. So why are chests, even in a fighter comp, not that important in this flag set, Dead Pulse? Well, you're going to get a free Massamune. And mm -hmm. honestly, you can buy either steel armor. Uh, it's going to be guaranteed at a shop. Or gold bracelets. Uh, which are mm -hmm. 24 absorb, and I think the steel armor has got 35 or something. Right. So, also known as good enough, right? Oh, and then, absolutely. of course, there's another critical one that's incentivized as well, which is the ribbon. And it's yeah. going to be far faster for you to check just the incentive locations, even if it involves sometimes diving an extra dungeon with warp to get those items, than it will be to check all the chests. So, vanilla trap tiles are on right now, so mm -hmm. this was always going to be an earth. It's not terrible. Like an Earth, if it rolls low, uh, it's pretty easily killable. You have Fade, you have Ice 3, like, nah. Weak to <laughs> fire, fire. To, fire 2, it's, it's weak to fire, so. Mm -hmm. And this is probably <laughs> to get a couple of extra Fade charges, because, yeah, charging into, uh, I think it was level 4, maybe 6. Yeah. I think this is totally reasonable, um, given the current, like, level situation. Uh, like, you really do want just a few levels just to, like, level 10 or so is a huge survivability increase and a, a massive amount more spell charges than level 4, right? So getting those early is quite valuable. Uh, there's another aspect as well. Uh, Luffy did pick up a katana, um, mm -hmm. and there's an incentivized mass immune out there. So basically, we need to find either the tail or the mass immune. We basically doubled our chances of having a decently end game weapon and one that's going to take us to the end game as well. Because I don't, mm -hmm. I don't care if you don't have fast or what level you are. Like, if you have a katana, it's going to take three turns or less to kill, you know, carry to kill Lich. Mm -hmm. This is actually a really common. Um, I hesitate to call it an error, but this is a very common route thing I find that I do when I'm not fully focused and that I remove from my gameplay when I'm doing extremely well. And that's that, um, oh shoot, I'm out of spell charges or I need to revive someone, so I need to go to a town. Um, when I'm really on my game, I notice that I almost always will either have the house or I'll plan that grind in advance. I don't know if you do the same thing, but like making sure that you have a house when you go to somewhere like... Earth Cave to get a few levels, or if you don't have a house, just get the levels around Crescent Lake instead, right? Like, peds yeah. are going to be almost as good EXP, if not better, than fires in this situation, and you can check the encounters relatively quickly there. So that's something that I find costs way more time than you think it does um, to, to do something like that. Uh, yeah, even in spring tournaments, uh, as well as a couple of matches in Fall League, uh, and I think once or twice in SGL, I definitely checked uh, to see if there were peds or giants or just something around uh, Crescent Lake that could get me a couple of uh, safety levels, because I was usually level 5 when I got there. Right, and and the difference between, you know, getting levels 5 to 10 around Crescent Lake is a very different story than getting levels 10 to 16, right? Like, 10 to 16 is not really what you want to be doing, but 5 to 10 absolutely is. Uh, Lich is rude. 
Yeah, so that blizzard comes out, but you saw, I mean, with these with this scaling, two fades is gonna be enough to, to take to take Lich out. Levels though, that's the perfect example of one of those things where if you were a newer player and you just dove straight down being like, Oh, I have two casts of fade, your red mage wipes to the first blizzard and all of a sudden you're out of luck, right? Absolutely. So those early levels are just so important. Uh, so because we have Thief Lockpicking at level 10, uh, we did go quick grab the Canaria item, which is great. Um, however, this also means that the key is out there somewhere, and if we find that, that's a dub location. So we can try to avoid an area that we just plain don't want to go to. Mm -hmm. So checking Melman for magic is definitely an interesting call. I mean, we definitely we're starting to get to the point where we have the levels to buy it. But I do generally like to um, not necessarily shop in Melman for magic unless I absolutely have to before promotion, if I think I'm going to be promoting uh, just with the red mage and the white magic. Of course, also the warp slot. But Yeah, I usually check. I will only check level five if I'm looking for something in particular. And most of the time, it'll just be in passing and try to waste as little amount of time as possible. Yeah, or, or you go there when you're translating the slab, right? That's like the other. Yeah. Of course, you check the magic when you go into the town anyways. Um, I like the waterfall before sea shrine play. I, I do this, I think you should do it probably 85% of the time. It's a good heuristic. The time you break it is when you're in go mode. Or if there's an incentive item in sea and there's an incentive item in waterfall and you only need one more to get into go mode, then maybe you do sea shrine first. But in so many cases, Waterfall and Ordeals are some of the best places to get mid-game levels being relatively less dangerous for pretty good enemy um, and difficulty. So um, I like Waterfall before Sea Shrine for sure. And then get, getting the tail, and absolutely, I don't think there's any question about this. You have the Katana, uh, you have the Dragon Armor, you absolutely go to promote. So what do you think about the decision to go to Waterfall? Um, instead of something like Ordeals, considering that we have the Oxyale. You see, I love Ordeals, but I will admit that Ordeals takes um, roughly two and a half minutes if you're flying there just to walk to Ordeals, get through it, and walk out, especially without exit. You have an extra 15 seconds there. Mm -hmm. um, and when you go to Waterfall, I mean, that was a 45-second dive. So chances are, uh, if you're taking the mathematical play, uh, which is, you know, go to Waterfall if you're looking for an item versus Ordeals. Cool. I'm a little bit, um, like, I would not be really checking chess density for the sake of chess. Like, we already have a Dragon Armor, we have a Katana, we have a Guaranteed Moss, a Guaranteed Ribbon. I think we have close to what is required to win. Um, I don't know. What, what do you think about chess checking in this flag set? I am 100% against it. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you get lucky, if it's there, I, I guess that's... I wouldn't do it if I, w if I was, uh, you know, in, in a heated race. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, but now we're picking up magic. This is good. Uh, you don't want to forget about it. You're already here. Um, and if Luffy can route in either an ice cave with this or go to uh, uh, Volcano, that, uh, this would be perfect. Yeah. I, I think... Um... Yeah, I, I know I've told this story a bunch of times, but I just do remember, I'll never forget when I was doing Duckling Derbies and I just was watching Crab Cakes do run of them. And I just saw her, whenever she promotes, she almost always goes and buys magic because, yes, it costs you a little bit of time, but it's very, very similar to the Cabin's Heels um, Pure Softs thing that we talked about earlier, which is like it costs you almost no time and you're going to be doing it anyways at some point, so you might as well do it early. Because, like, yes, it costs you... 45 seconds to do all that shopping or yes it costs you two a minute and a half to do all your promotion spell buying but if you're going to do it anyways spend the extra 20 or 30 seconds of flying around to do it now because if you think about it and you're going to do this anyways the cost to buy the spells and like the cost of walking through towns and all that stuff that's a sunk cost you're going to be doing that now or you're going to be doing it later there's nothing that's going to speed you up if you do it later so the only thing that you're paying for that is the flying time of going to those towns and then now rather than later and that's like less than 30 seconds so pay the cost early uh, because the amount of time it can save you is minutes if it saves you from a wipe in sky um so one thing that i'm going to point out right now is that the red mage does have life it is level six 
which means mm-hmm. oh, I don't have my I don't have my handy dandy chart. I know that if it were a black mage or a white mage, they'd have to be level sixteen to get their first charge of that. So I think a mm-hmm. red mage is eighteen. Yeah, I think that's correct. This is going to be important. The first thing I'm thinking of is okay. I need to get to at least level eighteen to get one charge. Level nineteen to get two charges. Um, and that's kind of the problem with thief comps is you want to run because you have the ability to do it. So this means that you're going to take less battles. And yes, it's going to be faster, but at the same time, uh, I am going to be very surprised if Luffy enters Topher, um, if he doesn't take a grind at all, if he enters above level 18 across the party. Yeah. I mean, you definitely could consider, like, you know, punching some eyes a little bit or something if you do end up doing Ice Cape, but it's... Not that good with a full party. Like, yes, eyes are a good grind, but people think that, but it's a good black belt grind. It's a good solo class one shot grind. It's not a great, you know, fade down the eyes type grind. It's certainly better than other things, but it's not, that doesn't make it good or fast. And then, of course, I'm a stickler for the details uh, on that. Uh, Luffy, you want to use... Uh, you get three free steps with the um, with the river tiles there. I always use them. Mm-hmm. And you miss more free steps right there. Just kind of little things. I mean, this, this isn't supposed to be, like, a completely anal thing, but if you're asking, like, you've missed roughly 28 steps so far, and that's not a big deal, but if you hone oh. that, like, those 28 steps translate to 45 seconds. Well, Luffy's a good player too, right? Like this is not a raw duck that we're just like trying to point out that you should be doing, um, you know, like what spells you should be buying or spell order selection or spell selection in battle. Like Luffy's making largely good decisions in those areas, right? So the areas of improvement are things like getting out of towns 10 seconds quicker, uh, things like making sure that you use every single free step, slightly better spell selection on certain enemies, um, maybe slightly better like high level macro ideas like grind selection and things like that, um, level management throughout the seed. Those are the things where the b- most improvements are going to come from. So this is something that, that I'm a little confused on because we've checked a lot of chests. However, mm-hmm. uh, so Luffy goes here, finds the key. That's terrible. Uh, he resets out. So the kind of thing I'm thinking of is, is there are four chests literally on the way to checking that incentive, like the three right above the, the doorway and then one just off to the right. If you're going to stop and check the uh, the Titan's chest, why wouldn't you check those four instead? Yeah, 100%. Like, all chests have an equal probability of having those uh, an item that you're looking for. But the first question is always, like, what am I looking for? And if I don't need it to win, am I looking for, like, some combination of items that leads up to me feeling safe? Or am I just looking for, like, something that's going to happenstantially make me faster? And if that's the case, is there enough items that are going to do that that it's worthwhile me opening these boxes and in flag sets like this the answer is almost always no one of the reason um how do i say this nicely um during um fall league (laughs) we often said that like the newer players are so much better at black belt comps than 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 we were in many ways but also than uh they are at fighter comps and the reason for that is because black belts removes there's only one decision to be made in black belts after you get out of the early game early games are tough and that's why, like, the players who were doing really, really well on black belt comps, they knew how to get out of the early game. That's a skill in and of itself. But black belts, you don't make decisions on chess. You don't make decisions on gear. You don't make decisions on whether you're ready for Topher or not because you have a black belt. You need to find a grind, and you need to determine what level to go on that grind. And those are the extent of the decisions. Um, fighters are a little bit more difficult in terms of decisions when you're ready to win, when you're not, and so on and so forth. And that's why box opening is such a key part of their gameplay but this duckling seed has removed that decision for you you have a win condition in incentive boxes so i would just not open boxes except for early game money and i think that's just kind of the decision period unless maybe if there's absolutely no fast no temper no life no nothing then maybe i would reconsider but that's pretty odd all right, so we found fast. It's level seven, which means that if our black mage wants to cast it once, they need to be level 20. If they want to cast it twice, that's level 21. And if they want to cast it three times, that's level 23. That is above what Luffy is looking to do. So either uh, you take it down to a two man when you go into Sky with a, uh, or a three man uh, with the thief currently, the 
red mage and the black mage, uh, and you try to get up to level 21, 22 just to get those spell charges. Um, or you, you just go at 18. And I think this in general is just the reason why a four-person comp isn't, like, ideally suited to these all-loose flag sets, because you're just not getting that much EXP, right? Yeah, absolutely. And by four-person comps, I don't mean four-person from the get-go. I mean four-person throughout the entire seat, just, like, purposely keeping up your whole comp. These are four powerful characters, though, each with a role to play. It's just, do you have enough time to get them all up to level 21 to 24, where you need them for them to be have the most effectiveness? And also survive a nuke. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to watch to see. Luffy should be taking almost every fight as, as he's running up here, just to get, you know, two or three more levels. So what is this encounter table? Oh, it's level 14 and 15. Oh, gross. Like, this is exactly what you need to be doing as a Thief comp, but it still feels bad, because we saw against Kraken, even though the Thief had the Katana, uh, because the strength growth is not there, and the katana, I believe, only has a 35 base weapon attack. Like better than the Vorpal, but yeah, still that's not true. Like but if you don't weapon, even if you do crit, you're you're not hitting for a lot. All right, so we found the mass moon. That helps. Uh, but we still don't have fast, so essentially, like we're just going to be tempering and hoping. Which is okay. Um. With some fade support, it's probably doable for Tia. It's just the question is, is it doable for the endgame bosses? Well, Luffy correctly taking all of these, basically every yeah. fight in here. Yeah, and you, as you mentioned, you really, really strongly agreed with us, and so do I. Uh, so I, it looks like, if I'm looking correctly, Luffy only has one more check to do, and that's the slab turn into Lafayne, and that should be the ribbon. Ribbon, yeah. Ooh, that's a tough decision. Do you do, you do the ribbon turn in? Uh, I have my answer ready. I'm going to hear what you have to I say absolutely, first, I don't have a ribbon. I absolutely turn that in. Huh. Okay, so I don't, because I try Topher once, is what I do. Because it's short Topher. If it was not short Topher, I 100% turn the ribbon in. But without short Topher, I, I would try it once. At I, this scaling. I didn't see if Luffy already turned in the slab, because if he did, then I absolutely... And knowing that that's the only one that I have, I would absolutely take that 45-second check out there. Hmm, okay. Interesting. I think I would rather take the 45-second cha uh, chance to like, try Topher. <laughs> that's fair. See if I get through the first three bosses, and then... Um, make the decision afterwards. But once again, let's go back to our discussion at the very beginning. If I thought I had an execution advantage, I'm going to Lafayne 100% of the time. If I thought I was even, I'm pretty sure this is the type of risk that I'm just willing to take to like not play too safe. And then if I feel like I'm behind, I 100% just go into Topher and hope they lost a minute turning in the slab. But I don't think he has the slab translated. That's why I mentioned what I did, by the way. I, I, if, if he had the slap translated, then just going to Lafayne, like, next door, I probably would do. Yeah, he has not yet translated the slab. Or he has not yet gone to Ice Cave. He has not yet gone to Ice Cave, either. What I am saying, though, I mean, we are in go, we've finished our, our shopping, and we're at, you know, 45 minutes. That's, that's still a stellar time to be in Temple of Fiends. Yeah, absolutely. I don't check these chests, because there's going to be nothing in here that, besides a ribbon, that I could use. Mm. Ale making the extremely correct call, by the way, of saying that ice is the ship. The ribbon oh, is correct, the yes. Yeah. Welcome to early floater life. Who stops the rude? Fire two charges. Okay. We now need to respect Lich a little bit more. So this is where we get into a little bit of a trouble here, because you ha you don't have any fast cast because the you're only level eighteen. Um, you're relying on a fighter with a mass immune and a thief with a katana, and that's that's great. That's great and everything. However. <laughs> <laughs> that thief, even when the thief crits, that those crits are only going to be hitting for 60, maybe 70 damage. 
the other issue is that we really need um we really need our full party up at all times right to get through these fights we need all the extra damage the extra lock the extra temper everything um so but yeah i mean so far so good I like this tempering up the fighter. I also like the thief in slot one here. Ooh, free turn. Should do it here. There we go. Whoa, we don't have. Oh, yeah, we don't have life, right? Too low level still. I didn't check, but I thought 18 we got our first charge of life. Oh, all right, so we're saving it? Deal three. Oh, okay. So, adjustment time? Nope, we're going to go bash our face in again. You know, if that black mage doesn't get quad X, we might have been able to beat TMI. Yeah, for sure. Short Topher has such a different mentality, right, than Long Topher, just because the, the time cost of a wipe is so much lower. You can just try and get the RNG you need to get through. Yeah, absolutely, because with uh, regular Topher, I mean, you're basically looking at seven minutes if you make it all the way to Chaos and wipe on Chaos. This, mm -hmm. you, make it to, you make it through this in Chaos, eh, two and a half, maybe three minutes. Yep. Okay, through carry. Kraken has a free spell um has decent but not great hp Ooh, that was a really big massa hit the lock usage is a little bit interesting to me uh oh now we get to see if we have life or not no we don't so uh, this is just the level situation, a dead pulse. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so it might be nineteen then that we need the the life charge, but the level after that we also get a life charge. So I would mm -hmm. absolutely like the preparation before this would be recognizing that I want fast, which means mm -hmm. I want that black mage to be level twenty one to have two charges of it, but mm -hmm. I also want the red mage to have two or three charges of life, which needs to be level twenty one to to pull that off. So and then, I would absolutely just take this and go, all right, we're... And, and the Thief, I think, needs to be level 20 to get their fifth hit for the Katana. So this is... I would absolutely go to 21 across the, uh, across the board. Yeah, I have... I, I probably, like, based off my thoughts, I would have a slightly different mentality. I think I would leave the Thief as, like, more of a tank. And by tank, I just mean someone who just absorbs melee hits. Um, so I would likely... Um, okay, time to go turn in the slab. Nope, we're pounding our faces a little bit more. I would likely have Dan the Thief off and just accepted that I need levels on my other characters. But um, but I, I think there's different ways. But like I think those level thresholds that you said, no matter how you're planning on getting them, whether that's a full party grind or if that's just taking a few characters to the levels or or whatnot, I think those level thresholds are correct, Dead Pulse. I just don't know if I agree that I need the Thief to be 20 for it to do its job. And its job for me is to take a punch. No, you're you're absolutely right. Like I, I'm going back and forth kind of on this, but once I get to chaos, if I have my full party up and I'm going to chaos, that thief has two temper charges. Those temper charges are being cast on the night, as exactly. well as two other temper charges. Because exactly. you're like, oh, I have a katana and I crit, but no, like I'm not going to do the full math on Twitch. But that thief hitting four times, it's going to crit one of those times. The average damage is going to be 70 against Chaos, whereas the average damage of four hits from the Masmin, because it has 56 base damage plus the fighter at around level 20, you know, add another 30-some uh, strength to that, uh, you're doing already 100 damage there. Yeah. Uh, also, that Zap... What? <laughs> so Zap is one of those spells that once I see it, I'm like, Ribbon, I would not keep bashing my face into Zap. Zap is just so brutal without... Um any resistances um and it's so hard to get resistances without um without a ribbon for Batia had no health okay so we have two temper charges on the ninja or maybe we have two temper charges on the ninja 
we have one temper charge on the ninja. But we do have our ruse charges. Oh, that's not a lot of damage. No, missing once plus only one temper charge. I would be trying to hit a crit loop here, I think. You just go a little wiggle waggle on the on the weight. <laughs> yeah, time to leave. So ribbon or levels or both? Uh, at this point I do both. I agree. That ribbon's not gonna that ribbon might get you there a little bit. Um one thing I'm going to mention is I believe that Life 2 was Red Mage learnable at level four. Oh, really? I believe it was slot four. Um, I can't Ooh. confirm it. Well, we'll go back and look at that uh, after this, but that's one of the notes that I made. I was just quick checking all of the magic levels before I did the, the review. Hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely huge, right? Yeah, okay. Considering I know, I, I, I couldn't see the tracker, but considering I knew this was slab to bottle, there's no way I would have gotten this ribbon before I dived Topher for the first time, but as soon as I saw Zap, I would go do it. I would take the minute risk, I think. Okay, so Luffy has decided that it is time for both levels and ribbons. Yeah, I, I absolutely think this is the correct choice now. Hmm. The encounter table seems to have a really long run off the power cycle, eh? So I think Volcano is reasonable. If it was a short run, I would definitely be doing Desert. Now, actually, what I would have done is when I was going to turn in the... Uh, the slab at Lafayne, I would mm -hmm. hard reset, but then I would soft reset uh, after coming out of Lafayne and try mm -hmm. to get all of those delicious encounters in the desert area while, while soft yeah, resetting fair. through them. That's fair, that's fair. Okay, so what's our stopping point here? Well, I... What I would do is I would get that Black Mage back up. I would get to level 21 to have two casts of fasts. Uh, I would down the Thief as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, I might keep the Red Mage up to until level 22 or something. And then just get the Fighter up to level 24 because you're already here. It's only going to take an extra 30 seconds. Yep, I agree. At this point, you've wiped enough times. Like, you're not winning any speed records, you have to hope your opponent's wiping in Topher as well, so you kind of want to make sure you're getting through if it costs you only 30 more seconds. Like, you don't go to 32, but you do go to 24, I would say. Okay, we have life charges, which is what we were checking. And this is kind of the danger of not taking a white mage. If you don't have life at a, a learnable level that, that you can do, you're basically at the mercy of, can your black mage live? Mm-hmm. Which is not a good bet to take. Yeah, even if that Black Mage was level 30, like it's, it's not going to have 400 health. It's, it's going to die to a nuclear. It's going to die to Bane. Good. I like that. That's a smart usage there, something that I see sometimes new players make a mistake on. If you only have life one, life, use a house, then uh, go in. So you don't have to like manually heal that person after you use life one. It's just a habit that people can get into. Lich is a monster. Yeah, it also has more than vanilla HP, eh? How did Luffy get through Lich like three times before? I mean, once again, short Topher, you just reset if something goes wrong. That's a big massive swing. Levels are magic, eh? Like, they just... They improve everything. <laughs> In theory, until you, like, any time between levels, what is it, 16 and level 23, uh, when the fighter gains a level, you're really only gaining roughly 8 to 10 damage per attack. Mm -hmm. um, it's not great, but uh, you do 3 or 4 rounds, that's, you know, each level is an extra 30 damage, sometimes that's all it takes. Oh, I was also thinking just like the small increase in M def, the small increase in HP, those things all make a really big difference. Uh, one extra spell charge of every level, like these things really add up, which is why it's so important to get um, like levels if you can without paying a massive cost for them. But as you said, like Luffy did the right thing. Something that I've talked about in past VOD reviews is like there's a difference between choosing to take levels and being forced to take levels. And in like all loose flag sets or 
um, with loose flag sets or um, if yeah basically those situations or like where where you don't just know it's just free chess you basically have to take levels so you don't have to make a decision to do so but in these situations when you have flag sets like this you have to make a conscious decision on when you're going to take the level and that can be a hard decision to make so keep that in mind that like you actually need to try to take levels here so get some goals in mind for levels when you're halfway through the seed and then try and hit those before you go into Topher. And even if it's going to cost you an extra 30 seconds, to figure out why am I comfortable with these levels or why am I not? And what do I need to do in order to make them comfortable? Have a goal. Be purposeful with your decision making. This is interesting. Uh, I, I can <laughs> see what you're doing, but th this is kind of this is kind of emblematic of what we've been talking about. Like, so the thief is going to require two to three tempers just to break through chaos's absorb. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's going to crit more often, but those are two or three temper casts that could have gone to the fighter who is already breaking through the absorb. Mm -hmm. If that fight, basically every time you cast a temper on this fighter, uh, it's going to do roughly another 100 damage per swing, and that's cumulative. So if you cast three tempers the first turn and it lasts four turns, uh, though that first turn of temper is going to be worth 1,200 damage over the course of this fight. Right. I also strongly disagree with like tempering up your ninja while your ribbon is on your fighter. You, you know, like I feel like you have to decide to go all in on the ninja with all the risks it entails. When your party is this low level and like this equipment level and this amount of fast, which is no fast, I don't think you can be wishy washy. I think you just have to commit to your decision like fully, right? So if you're going to go ninja, like you have to go ninja, equip them with the best armor, put the ribbon on them, um, and start casting in Viz 2s. If you're going to go fighter, which I think is the correct choice here, but, you know, then go fighter. Cast Ruse on your fighter, cast Temper Temper on your fighter. Also, Luffy with the classic strategy of uh, going right instead of left in free fight all fiends to change the luck up. That Black Mage is just serving the exact purpose of, like, can't keep a Black Mage alive. It's better, though, because last time Luffy lost two characters. This time we only lost one, which is a big yeah. difference. That was pretty good nuclear rolls. I also like this. Casting nukes, like, I would be nuking uh, these fiends to Vegeta's and back because I'm only casting tempers uh, <laughs> during the chaos fight until turn four, in which case I might nuke because, you know, we've already tempered up the, the fighter nine times. Tia also had no health, right? We knew that from the previous fight. Tia almost min-rolled, had like six or seven hundred health. Um, so nukes become so much more effective as a percentage of damage. and like expected turn of death okay so this time we're going all in on the fighter right yeah there we go so with one, three ten oh go ahead uh one thing i'm going to say is that i don't like putting the fighter in the third slot i like putting the fighter in the fourth slot just because if you're casting tempers repeatedly it is one less button push and one less um button push to mistake mm -hmm. uh, and you're probably not going for a crit loop at that point no, and we, we got Chaos. Chaos didn't have that much help. Yeah, so Luffy was at on Chaos around the 50 minute mark. Like, sorry, in Topher around the 50 minute mark? Or uh, it was like 45 minutes that Luffy yeah. was in Topher. So, you know, this is a, a situation where, like, trying to go fast, like, really, really, we really paid the price for it. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up the time stamp. First time in Topher. Yeah, so right there. Um, uh, Life 2 is level 4, slot 4. And this is something yeah. that we absolutely... If we came back for this, uh, we might have been able to make it through at like the 45-minute the mark. But, but it just kind of goes to show you how missing... Just missing one small piece of information uh, could mm -hmm. just screw up the whole run. We haven't, you know, we're not covering this yet in the Derby, but once you get to Blur's classes, one misread in Blur's classes can make the difference in a seed. Like having, you know, accessibility to like the katana or the defense or something like to equip the sword can make a world of difference. And I've seen that numerous times on seeds. Um, but, you know, so, yeah. overall, like I think Luffy did a very good job. Like I was I was impressed at uh, the routing. 
um, <laughs> the um, I'm not going to say like the missteps, like the lack of missteps, because there's only we, you know, I counted like 20, 25 in there or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's top tier execution. Mm-hmm. I think um, I think overall, just like having slight amounts of disrespect for the duckling seed, I think bit him in the butt here a little bit. Like this scaling is easier than normal, but still not a joke, right? And Topher's still going to do as Topher does. Um, so four characters at level. 16 with no ribbon um no fast and like six casts of temper is still going to be a big challenge um so i I think that's like just you know a a takeaway and i've actually been seeing this in the ap races funnily enough because the scaling hasn't been that high but like people have still been just wiping in topher like you mess with temple of fiends revisited and messes with you back make sure you have a win condition in mind and know what those critical levels gear etc etc are needed to win yeah, this is because absolutely there there was an instance in there that if Topher had rolled a certain certain way, Luffy would have been able to get through first shot, no ribbons, level sixteen, no problem. Um, mm-hmm. But that that is you kind of exemplified what makes these duckling seeds more dangerous than they appear because you're like, oh, low scaling, that's great, but you know what doesn't care about that? Bane, zap. <laughs> nukes they're still going to hit you just as hard and if you go in there at level 18 you, you're not going to have anyone above 400 hit points <laughs> so it's dangerously like low that you still have to watch out for yeah absolutely so you know i i think this you know we, we there's there's some other I, I as i said i think i think overall just i think the biggest takeaway here is just towns being able to get out of them slightly quicker, fixing your very, very small, like just removing those last final routing um, missteps, like map movement missteps. Um, I think your your selection was really solid in terms of your routing. Um, maybe consider not opening the boxes instead of taking levels. That's actually, that's a really good trade-off that I think maybe should be highlighted here, Dead Pulse. Like, right, how much better off would Luffy have been if uh, he had spent the, you know, 45 seconds to a minute checking cardia instead taking levels in on the way back from lafane or or anywhere right like or like even just yeah. walking up and down the bridge oh yeah absolutely like uh the grind that luffy took with those three characters was only about a two minute grind like let's say mm-hmm. that you took one minute while you were walking to carry and just did yeah. a four-man grind on those agamas just for three more levels mm-hmm. that would have been much more advantageous than checking you know 10 chests when do you think? When do you start thinking about how, where am I going to get the like? What level do I want to go into Topher, and where should I get those levels? Dead Pulse. I have an answer in mind. I'm just curious about you. Uh, the first thing I think about is I'm starting out with these flag sets, Fighter 24, uh, and then it slowly goes down. If I have fast, uh, if I have temper, and what level they are, how many charges I'm going to have. The lowest that it will ever get is I think level 18. Yeah, I agree. And it depends on me, too, if I'm going two-man or four-man, and it depends on if I have life or not. Because keep in mind, if you have a black mage and you don't have life, your black mage is not going to make it to chaos. I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind when you're doing those adjustments. Uh, for the for the Winter Duck Derby 2021, I took a white mage every single match because that was my exact fear. Uh, oh, my black mage has fast at level six. Well, it's no good because I get nuked down by carry. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to get to chaos with the fighter and the black mage up. And if I do that, nine times out of ten, I'm going to win because I have the levels that I need. To be fair, though, Dead Pulse, once again, it goes back to the execution advantage thing. Like, you had a fairly substantial execution advantage at that point. Maybe not over, like, the top four runners, but over the field as a whole, right? So playing a little bit safer was a good decision oh, that for is, you. Yeah, that is true. Um, so yeah, I think with that, that pretty much um, wraps up. Oh, my answer to the when do I start thinking about levels. I start thinking about levels once I have all the information. That's the moment I start thinking about what levels, like start setting my end game goals. And I, I consider I have all the information when I've decided I'm done opening boxes and I've decided and I know where all the rest of my incentives are. Um, so for example, in this seed, once you know that you're going to be getting the masa, that you're going to be getting the ribbon, um, which is basically at the beginning of the seed, so then what what information do you need? That's just when you're checking spells. So as soon as I had checked level six magic, I would be planning out what levels do I need, when do where am I going to take them? And that's the only way that you're able to take levels on like the agamas, like well before you go into sky, 
because you know you're only going to gain four or five levels in sky even if you take every fight right so that's where you're like okay i need to be level i want to be level 21 okay so i want to be 21 across the board so i'm going to get four or five levels in sky okay so that means i need to be level 17 going into sky which means i need to take these agamas to 16 because i'll get a level in c as well so 16 on the agamas a level in c four levels in sky boom 21 going into topher and like that's the type of thought process that you got to start adding to your game and of course knowing that you need to be level 21 across your board here because of spell placement is the other like slightly more difficult part but that's something that you know you can work on and and what i tell new players and that this has been very successful is to just tell yourself this is what i'm doing and this is why even if you're completely wrong just that thought process will be invaluable yeah i remember we uh discussed about that it's like why are you checking that chest and my answer was oh because i felt like it and yeah. that's a perfectly valid answer um, but it also goes to show, like, if that's your answer, why are you checking it? So you can always go back and say, oh, my decision making stinks. Well, at least that way, like, once you say that out loud, then you can be like, well, is because I feel like it going to help me win this race? And if the answer is no, well, then are you playing to have fun? Or are you playing to win the race? And I mean, the answer to that is yes, both, of course. But, you know, which amount? And is, you know, would you rather play instinctually and not think? Or would you rather uh, be a little bit more analytical about it? And of course, you know, myself, I'm very much on the analytical side but to each their own. And I, I don't judge people who make decisions the other way, but I think if you want to improve at this game, you definitely need to uh, analyze your decisions and make sure that you're making ones that you can kind of defend and that you're happy with at the end of the day. Well, I guess, yeah, that uh, wraps up. So our, so our overall kind of uh, thing is that uh, Luffy uh, did a bang-up job with this. Uh, the <laughs> areas to improve would just be like the two decisions. One, to have the thief in the first position because of that agility. And second, to remember that Life 2 was Red Mage learnable and pick that up uh, as soon as you were cycling for magic. Uh, and then gaining a couple of levels as you go, probably on the Agamas. Uh, and that, that's pretty much it. That's the ball game. I think maybe one more if the encounter rate was a little higher too, is um, considering Sky... Two? Yeah, the, the spider floor. Um, sometimes I open boxes on that floor just to get levels, and it looks stupid, but I'm getting levels because that floor has excellent encounters if you don't want to risk a warmeck on the bridge. So that's another place that, like, if it's, oh shoot, this is my last dungeon. Sky 2, pretty good. Or, of course, the desert if there's an early encounter as well. Or the desert even if there's not, just, you know, soft reset. But yeah, Deadpools want to take us, take us away? For, wrap up the first episode of the pulse of yeah this puff and pulse the first episode of the puff and pulse variety hour which lasted about an hour we got to uh, have a couple of laughs uh hang out with jat learn about archipelago and do a review on uh, luffy dv uh who i'm i'm going to say based on this uh with a couple of fixes is going to be a major contender going into spring tournament 2022 uh, but with that, uh, if you would like us to review your videos in the same manner, or a different manner, whatever, uh, go ahead, go, come out of the Discord, uh, post your video, post your flag set. Uh, everybody who posts over the next four weeks is going to get a review. Now, it may not be on the Puff and Pulse Variety Hour, but we will definitely get to all of them. Uh, so go ahead and do it, because uh, if you want to win, this, this is how you do it. Having people watch... Uh, having people critique and learning from any mistakes that you might have made. So thanks again for joining us. We will be back here next week, same time, same channel, uh, 8.30. Final Fantasy Randomizer time, uh, Randomizer time. I am the Man After Midnight, Dead Pulse. I have been joined by Jat2980. Gregory Puff will be here next week. Uh, stay tuned, and thank you very much.